Okay, this is the first of four videos on section 3-4, which is getting familiar with the polar coordinate system. So here I have a graphic from the OpenStax Calculus Volume 2 book, the page number 645, and we have the polar coordinate system here. The x-axis we call the polar axis, and uh, pi over 2 is going to be the vertical axis, the y-axis, and we might call that a radial line. Um, and then you see the concentric circles. We could label those as a distance of 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So let's take a point in the polar coordinate system, and that is going to be at an angle of pi over 4, and it is on the third ring, so we would call that 3 and pi over 4. And that's the way we can describe this point. Uh, we'll learn how to convert this point from this is polar coordinates into rectangular form and then take points in rectangular form and convert them into uh, polar uh, coordinates. The line here, pi over 4, that can be called a radial line. And so radial lines travel through the origin, and in polar coordinates we call that the pole. Okay. Now, this point 3 comma pi over 4, this is also can be represented as negative 3 comma 5 pi over 4, okay? And R, when we get a little bit further on, we call it the directed distance. If it is negative, you're going to go in the opposite direction. So, we go to 5 pi over 4, there it is, and instead of going out from there towards the 5 pi over 4, a distance of 3 units, we're going to go 3 units in the opposite direction. So we're going to go 3 units this way. Okay, and then so that point 3 comma pi over 4 and negative 3 comma 5 pi over 4 is actually uh, two different ways of representing the same point. Let's go ahead and draw a right triangle. And we'll have the tip of the triangle be at the pole, one of the tips, I guess. And the hypotenuse is going to be the directed distance, which is R. The angle there is going to be theta. The polar axis is going to be right here. We'll put in our right angle. Then we have your x and your y. And then we have the point here, x comma y, which is also going to be represented as r theta. Using the Pythagorean theorem, we have x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. And the tangent is going to be the opposite, which is y, over the adjacent, which is x. The cosine of theta is the adjacent, which is x, over the hypotenuse, which is r. If we clear the fraction, then we're going to have r cosine of theta is equal to x. The sine of theta is equal to the opposite, which is y, over the hypotenuse of r. If we solve that for y by clearing the fraction, we have r sine of theta is equal to y. And those four equations there are the equations that we're going to use to go between polar and rectangular coordinate systems and back and forth between the two of them. Okay? All right. So converting points between coordinate systems, given a point P in the plane with Cartesian coordinates x, y, and polar coordinates r, theta, the following conversion formulas hold. x is equal to r cosine of theta and y is equal to r sine of theta. r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared, and the tangent of theta is equal to y over x. A polar representation of a rectangular coordinate, x comma y, is not unique, and you saw that uh, in the previous uh, slide where we had, I think we had 3 comma pi over 4, and negative 3 comma 5 pi over 4, that actually represented the same, the same point. So, down here it says if x comma y is equal to r theta, then r comma theta can be represented as r comma 2k pi plus theta. 
the 2k pi is an integer multiple of 2 pi and so all that's going to do is uh, do a full revolution or many full revolutions but it's going to end up in the same location it's going to end up in the same radial line or we can do uh, negative r and then a 2k plus 1 pi and then plus theta and so that's going to uh, go 90, not 90, uh, 180 degrees away uh, notice that uh, pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4 differ by uh, pi. That's an odd multiple of pi there. Um, if we wanted to go ahead and convert these, uh, x is equal to r, so that'd be 3 cosine of pi over 4, and that's going to be equal to 3 root 2 over 2. y is equal to 3 sine of pi over 4 and so that's going to be equal to 3 root 2 over 2 so this point here is 3 root 2 over 2 comma 3 root 2 over 2 if we use the other values the negative 3 and the 5 pi over 4 x would be equal to 3 cosine of 5 pi over 4 cosine of 5 pi over 4 is going to be a negative so that would give us oh and hold on a second I missed something here you see that this r is not uh, negative, is not uh, positive 3, it's negative 3. Sorry about that. So I realized that we had a little bit of a mistake there. Okay, so it's going to be negative 3 times negative root 2 over 2. So it gives us the 3 root 2 over 2. And then likewise with the y, that's going to be equal to negative 3 sine of 5 pi over 4. And again, that's going to give us 3 root 2 over 2. And so both of these polar representations, while they look different, they actually represent the same point. Okay. All right. So we're going to do a couple examples of converting from the polar coordinate system to rectangular and then from rectangular to the polar coordinate system. Okay. So here I just have that coordinate system again So for our reference. And our examples are going to convert the following polar coordinates into the rectangular form. So the first uh, point I have is 3 and pi over 6. Okay, so we got 1, 2, and 3, labeling those there. And then we're going to go to the radial line pi over 6, and we're going to go 3 units along that. So there's our point. 3 and pi over 6. x is equal to r cosine of theta. So that's going to be 3 cosine of pi over 6. Go back and uh, memorize your unit circle if you don't have it memorized. Excuse me. So cosine of pi over 6 is going to be root 3 over 2. So this is going to be 3 root 3 over 2. And the y is r sine of theta, which is going to be 3 sine of pi over 6. The sine of pi over, pi over 6 is 1 half, so this is going to be 3 times 1 half or 3 over 2. And so that gives us the ordered pair, 3 root 3 over 2, comma, 3 over 2, as our rectangular representation of this polar coordinate. Let's do another one. Let's look at negative 2, comma, 4 pi over 3. And so we're going to get a little bit more practice with that directed distance. So 4 pi over 3, here it is. Okay. And we're going to go to 4 pi over 3. And if it was positive 2, we would go right here. However, it's negative 2, so we're going to go in the opposite direction. So we're going to end up being right there. And so that point is negative 2, comma, 4 pi over 3. So let's go ahead and convert. x is equal to r cosine of theta. So that's going to be negative 2 cosine of 4 pi over 3. So it's going to be negative 2 times, and cosine of 4 pi over 3 is going to be negative 1 half. So it's going to give us the point 1 for the x. y is r sine of theta, which is going to be negative 2 sine of 4 pi over 3. So it's going to be negative 2, and the sine of 4 pi over 3 is going to be negative root 3 over 2. So it's going to give us the point, or the y value of root 3. So this point in rectangular form is going to be 1 comma the square root of 3. All right, now let's convert rectangular to polar coordinates. So again, I have my polar coordinate system. And we're going to find the polar 
Uh, we're actually going to find four polar points for the given rectangular uh, point. So we're going to find four polar representations of one rectangular point that are all equivalent. So example number three, we're going to look at the point 5 comma 5. So now we're going to use x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. So 5 squared plus 5 squared is equal to r squared. That's 50, which is 25 times 2, is equal to r squared. So we'll use the positive value for r, so that's going to be 5 square roots of 2 is equal to r. The tangent of theta is equal to y over x, which is going to be 5 over 5. So we have the tangent of theta is equal to 1. And uh, if we're going to apply the inverse tangent, that's going to give us an angle between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. And so where the tangent is equal to 1, that's going to be at pi over 4. So your theta is going to be equal to pi over 4. Okay, so we have the ordered pair in polar coordinates as 5 root 2 comma pi over 4. I'm going to go ahead and label this ring here as a distance of 5 root 2 from the pole. And uh, we're going to go to pi over 4 as the radial line. So there we go. So if we want another positive angle, I'm going to do two positive uh, angles um, and then two, um, doesn't have to be negative angles, but uh, we're going to use negative uh, 5 root 2. So I guess we'd say our, radi our r is positive. We'll do two positive. So we got one of them here and then we'll do another positive one. And so all we have to do is add any even integer of integer multiple of pi of of uh, of two pi, excuse me, um, or subtract an even in, uh, multiple of two pi. So this gives us five root two comma nine pi over four. So the two pi would take us all the way around, and then we'd go another pi over four. Okay, and then that's our radial line. It stops at pi over four. We're going to go five root two out. Now I want to use uh, a negative r, and so what I need to do is I need to add or subtract an odd multiple of just pi. So what I'll do is I'll add just pi to it. So that's going to give us negative 5 root 2 comma 5 pi over 4. So let's go ahead and follow that along. So we'll go to 5 pi over 4, so there it is. And then we're going to follow the radio line backwards, so we're not going to go towards 5 pi over 4. We're going to go away from it. And so that's going to send us 5 root 2 in the direction of pi over 4. And so we get to the same point again. Okay. And then let's do one more. Okay. Now I could subtract pi. I could add 3 pi. I have an infinite, an infinite number of, of possibilities. I'm going to go ahead and add another... I'm going to add 3 pi. It has to be an odd multiple of pi, so we'll add 3 pi. And so we have negative 5 root 2, comma, 13 pi over 4. And let's go ahead and try that out. Okay, so we're going to go... There's 2 pi. And then here's 3 pi, okay? And then we're just going to go pi over 4 more which should be stopping us at 5 pi over 4. And then we're going to go in the opposite direction. We're not going to go towards 5 pi over 4. We're going to go and follow the radial line to positive pi over 4. I'm going to go a distance of 5 root 2 from the pole. Okay. Well, that's kind of the basics of graphing points in, in uh, polar coordinates, converting back and forth. And uh, stay tuned while we get into graphing uh, actual functions and polar coordinates. So we'll see you in the next one.